Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I am Cody Coster, and with me, per usual, Mr. Andy Fallman. For uh, the time frame here, we're in the second week of February. Today is the 11th. Uh, Andy and I are going to kind of jump around and not really stand in one specific area today. We're going to start out with some May beans, go to July to Dees Way, and then uh, show you guys a chart of piggies. Yeah, well, we got some beans, some pigs, and a little, just a little bit of everything for you today, Cody. We're just all over. Giving the people We're all over the place, but that's okay. There's there's a lot going on around here. Um, yeah, we start with May beans. It's you know had a pretty big break yesterday, right? You had the WASI report. Um, and you know, it, 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 what sticks out to me the most about this chart is I drew this red line prior. It's at 13 and a half, right? And if you just, if I just take this away and you just look at all this, this, the consistent support that it seems to find, right? It, it took a stab at getting beneath there during this time frame prior to the report back in January and, and just clearly didn't like being beneath that price. So while you did have a big, you know, break yesterday, he took a stab getting through the th- uh, 13 and a half today and just couldn't do it, right? So consistently, this market is finding plenty of support around 13 and a half. It did it back here before it started to take off, tried to do it here and just could not bust through it. And it, to me, I, I look at that and I say, that's pretty significant, right? I mean, that price just, it, it, as long as it continues to be supportive, you know, the, the further that this chart kind of chugs along, I would imagine that you'll just get right, you, you start to find more and more stability from that price and i think it makes buyers a little bit more anxious um you know fundamentals we've been hearing a little bit still about beans being relatively snug um but just technically speaking just technically speaking it, it, this chart looks like it made a pretty strong bounce off of this 13 half again and wants to climb back into this i think the next thing that sticks out to me is getting over this trend again so that's what i was just going to ask you and you and i talked about this a little bit yesterday Yesterday we were like 48 cents lower and settled. We actually traded and settled below that short-term trend line, and then today went back and settled directly on that trend line. Mm-hmm. Is there anything? Because yesterday a lot of people were saying, okay, the next place to go test is 13 bucks, which we had done, you know, before. We tested it twice. Oh God, about a month ago, three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that says? If you settle below and then trade and settle on that line again, what would be the next ramification down the line? I think, I think again, it's it's this 13 half price, right? I mean, let's just forget about this trend line for a second here. It's this, it's this, this is 13 half price that if you get a settlement beneath it and then open open lower, right? What sticks out to me about this, like this, these two candles right here, and really these three, but you know, this one, two, three formation is that you, you know, had this big break through 13 and a half and you couldn't maintain it, right? You had a pretty strong rejection of that break. And then the next day, if I can just kind of zero in on this for a second, the next day that open right here was above the previous day's close for these two candles. Those types of formations, when you have a strong rejection then an open in the direction of that the next day is usually pretty significant, right? And then since then, 13 and a half seems to be a price that finds a lot of support. So I think, you know, it's twofold. It's breaking that 13 and a half price, but it's also too, you know, let's say it settles 1340 or something. Just make that number up, right? The next day settles 1340. And then the next day's open is called like 1335. So beneath the previous day's close, I think will be the, the one that gets significant. And if that does happen, you have multiple days in a row, then this this trend line starts to become more or less a magnet, right? And, and depending on how quickly that happens, that could be beneath 13 bucks. I'm the other way though. I, I think this this trend line right here becomes the next thing it bounces off of, and it's you'll see. I think what we're gonna find is that this move here in the last two days, today and yesterday, is similar to this one over here. I was just gonna say that if you could take those three charts or those three candles right there and overlay them mm-hmm. on yesterday and today, if the same thing happens tomorrow, we can expect probably a 14.30 test. Yeah, I, I think I think but you know call it by this time next week. Getting back over 14 bucks, I think is very possible. But I think the first step will be: do we get an open tomorrow, uh, for tomorrow's session, I should say, above today's close? Today's close being 13.66 and uh, uh, three quarters, right? So call it a 13.37, even open or better. All of a sudden, you've opened above the previous day's close, and you've done it after rejecting, you know, a, an attempt at 13 and a half. I think that's going to be strong. And again, what you'll just end up seeing is something similar to these three candles, where you try to break 
takes a couple of days to retrace it, and then you just keep chugging along this uptrend right here. May beans, man, it's the gift that keeps on giving. May beans, the gift that keeps on giving. That's right, but I, I, that's my call. I think this uptrend holds. I think it, it just comes back into play. I'm with um, you. I'm with you there. Next one. Speaking of uptrends. Heyo. This is uh, July to D square. Let me pull that back real fast. So we we saw, gosh, we saw this this big break. This was the end of January, and since then we've just been kind of cruising right along. And what sticks out to me. If you just kind of zero in on the last couple of weeks with the price action, this is starting to look a lot like kind of like a it's like an ascending triangle. You know, it's it's a higher low, right? You have this you have this low, clearly couldn't test it, couldn't get through 46. And what's interesting about it is that you have spot just continues to steadily climb, and front months are starting to pick up too. So March got over 50 cents, um, and these deferred months, while lower and discounted to spot. This 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 chart overall again this short term kind of higher low formation right here looks like it wants to at least take this oops take this thing back to what would this be for we call it 49 cents I think we blow through that and keep and go test where spot is right but I think the next step is to go test this this price right here okay so but again I just want to point this out because this higher low got put in. And now we're up against where it kind of broke down from call it around 47 on average, pretty close. I think that it's just going to accelerate this market to 49 pretty quickly. And then yeah, where, once we get through that. Where are we in the pack compared to spot? Is it, I know we're at about 54 quarters. So we're what, yeah, 10 50 cents, quarter, cents. yeah. I mean, it's call it like eight cents discount. So if we catch up to spot too, put it in perspective for class three, eight cents on way, that's six cents per penny in class three. So you're talking close to 50 cents, a hundred way that could get built into class three, July to these just from way meeting up to where spot is. Absolutely. That's something, but um, switching gears, we're all over the place today. You, uh, this was a great spot by you. Hang on, let me pull it up. Bam. What do you think? <clears throat> little uh, little hog action here on the weekly chart, and uh, we were kind of looking at this one before we jumped on. Quite the rounding action that you've had going on since mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much end of the year, right? Yeah. Maybe even October, November, <clears throat> December type area. Uh, bounced off about 63, 78 a couple times, and just continually climbing its way higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's this is a great spot by you. You know this 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 type of rounding pattern this U bottom. This is this is very strong and it's and it took a lot of time to kind of build this too, right? I mean, this is remember this is a weekly chart. This is not a daily. So really, this started to build called around Halloween time, right? And and has been since just rounding out really nicely. You've had multiple rejections to try to get back into this rounding once it once it started to get away from it. And now you've cleared all of that. And it just looks like with this momentum that it's got here and the, and the amount of time that it took to build it, I mean, it just looks like it's got this this high built. Uh, it, it's just, it, this. I think this price becomes a magnet, 78 half. So where are we at now? 74, so another four and a half, five cents here. Which that 78 half would have been, I mean, if you take away the September right there, it would have been back to highs that we were this time, 2019. Yep, yep, I mean, you, so you're gonna, Go ahead. I was going to say a, a two-year time span where it was tested uh, one, two, three, four times. And it looks like it's a, a little bit of resistance there. I think you've said it before, which once is resistance possibly becomes support mm -hmm. if you can get up there and settle above that. Yeah, call it like 80 cents, right? You start trading 80 cents and holding that price. This This top right here becomes support for sure. No, this is a great spot by you. I think um, you know you go test this. The next the next question is going to be: Is it going to turn into an M or keep going? But it sure looks like 78 and a half, 79 cents is about to become a magnet here. Definitely have to put hogs on our watch list. You don't want to put hog. Put, put the piggies on the watch list. Get some bacon. Last one. Last but not, not least, least. Chart of the day. Chart, chart of, the, of the, day. the day, folks. Pretty self-explanatory here. Threw that note in there. Yeah, we're a big premium, to, but not that big of a premium to spot. I think spot's about 15 and a half with no premiums, right? But this chart, I, I just, it's just, you know, we, we we went limit today. Cash wasn't even the most aggressive, you know, uh, it, blocks were up, what, two and a quarter today. Barrels were on, she traded some barrels there. 
Fundamentally, you're starting to hear some news about some potential tightening for cheese. Futures up forward are certainly saying cheese needs to go higher on a spot basis, but also too potentially a lot of stimulus coming down the line. You know, the, the, that news about the $4 billion potential spend here, and we haven't even got through that one and a half billion. Um, and, and what's this right here? What is this up here? Cody, what is this? Oh, look at that. Is that a bull coming in hot? Man, Andy's getting pretty That's... bullish in class three over here, folks. Get look excited. Out. Look it, out. You get, like... a, you get one, you get this, you get this nice higher low. You get a big close over all this noise going back to January. This thing looks like it wants to just, you know, there's all kinds of room here to rally, I think, for March. So I'd be right. looking out. I, I think we got more upside. And Mr. Bull here seems to me to agree with me. But it seems like the first stimulus that we got uh, last year, call it June, it was like overnight. People knew this thing was coming. They knew the government was going to step in here and buy cheese. Mm -hmm. Late yesterday afternoon, we get the announcement of the $4 billion uh, added on to, which is a possibility. And nothing really happened, right? Nothing really happened yesterday or this morning. And it seems like more people are just kind of low key hearing it. And futures are just kind of like building on each other like a ladder. Yeah, I, our, it's, it's just it's a lot different than it was, I guess, is my point. It, it certainly has a lot different feel. But also, too, you know, you're, if you if you go back and look at some of the price action we saw when we had that first that food box announcement, you know, futures were already, pro, you know, pushing up against, you know, the head that took a stab at 19 bucks back there. We're already at 18 dollars. You know, we've been hovering around the 16 dollar mark for some time. You know, this is this is a this is a different we're in a different uh, kind of venue of price. Right. We're. You know the spot market is in call it like a mid 150s number and you're starting to see and hear about you know us getting a little bit tight on on, on the barrel front especially is what we've been hearing a little bit on but also too and you've seen a lot of barrels trade here and hold this like 150 price but also you know you think about it we've been pretty cheap with respect to the rest of the world so i think again fundamentals aside this, this chart it, it just you put in this higher low right here you cleared all this and you did it on a day when, hey, we, we're limit bid right now. Yeah. You know, if you were selling anything in, you know, from here on, you're now, it's, it's, it's underwater. And you've got, like I said, you have what feels like a bottoming spot market and a pretty strong higher low here. So I think March could get really interesting. It doesn't start pricing until next week. So, you know, it is a four week month, but, uh, you know, if you start moving higher at the beginning of the pricing period, a lot of that, you know, call it discounted, what we're seeing now that may not come into play. And if everybody wants to, they can go follow Joe Schmidt on Basis Loaded to learn a little bit about the March uh, pricing month and how the pricing action kind of works. So there's a little plug for Joe there. A little, little plug for Joe. This is, no, this is uh, I think this is going to turn out to be a pretty interesting expiration. Um, I, I, no, I mean, I'll just say it. I put in the buy it right there. Pretty self-explanatory. But I think yeah. this chart looks great and it's, it's got more upside to go. Awesome. Well, hey, everybody, that's going to do it for another episode of Tech Talk for myself and Andy. So if you would, go give the EverAg channel a big thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell, and you will learn of any new episodes coming out from myself and Andy, Joe, uh, Britt, and Mitch, anybody from the EverAg channel. Mm -hmm. With that, we will uh, bid you adieu and see you next time. Thanks for joining, everybody. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>